Charles Schwab is the founder of Charles Schwab Group, which is a discount brokerage firm that has nearly $8 trillion in client assets. Yes, you heard it right, $8 trillion. That is more than the total wealth of oil-rich countries like Saudi Arabia, Dubai, Netherlands, and even Russia. It means if Charles Schwab Corp was a country, then it would have richer than mentioned oil countries, it will be richer than Switzerland, Mexico, Brazil, and Belgium. Even the whole of Africa has less wealth than the assets managed by Charles Schwab Corp. Want to know Charles Schwab who his newsletter publisher made that all possible? Watch the full video. We at Business Chronicles tell the stories of extraordinarily successful people. Please subscribe to our channel to help us in making more videos. Charles Schwab was born on July 29, 1937. His parents were Lloyd and Terry Schwab. He grew up in Sacramento, California and attended Santa Barbara High School. At school, he captained the golf team. After high school, Schwab attended pre-college at Holy Rosary Academy in Woodland, California. He then joined Stanford University where he graduated with a BA in economics in 1959. After finishing his undergraduate studies, he joined Stanford Graduate School of Business where he studied for and earned an MBA. At the university, he was part of the Sigma Nu fraternity. Schwab struggled with dyslexia throughout his academic years, and taking notes during classes was next to impossible for him. He was a slow reader and relied mostly on the notes his friends took in class. He graduated college thanks to his strengths in math and economics. While his dyslexia made things harder for him in his school years, it did have its positives. Schwab had strong visualizations and conceptualization skills. Because he was not a sequential thinker like many other people, he could process broad sets of data and arrive at a conclusion faster than others who had to process things step by step. These unique abilities served him well in his career. In 1963, Schwab teamed up with three other finance professionals to launch Investment Indicator and Investment Newsletter. The newsletter grew progressively, going up to reach 3,000 subscribers, each of whom was paying $84 per year. The four initially ran the investment newsletter service as a partnership. In 1971, however, they decided to incorporate. They incorporated the business as First Commander Corporation, a subsidiary of Commander Industries, Inc., headquartered in California. They incorporated the company to publish the Schwab Investment Indicator newsletter as well as to perform conventional broker-dealer securities business. In 1972, Schwab bought all the stock of Commander Securities, Inc., assuming full control of the company. With the help of a $100,000 loan from his uncle, he set up a traditional brokerage, then changed the company's name to Charles Schwab & Company, Inc. in 1973. In those early days, securities were sold by salesmen to consumers. The salesmen earned a commission on the sales they made. This model encouraged the security sellers to market risky investments to consumers because they carried higher commissions, to the detriment of consumers. Schwab disproved of this model and how established firms did not show concern for their customers. His big break came in 1975 when the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission passed the Securities Acts Amendments of 1975, deregulating the securities industry. Brokerage firms could now charge customers fees as they saw fit. Many of Schwab's competitors took this opportunity to raise their fees. Schwab went in the opposite direction. Convinced he could democratize investing to benefit the masses, he lowered customer charges by half. He then removed commissions for security salespeople and replaced them with hourly rates, eliminating the incentives they had to sell risky securities. He further put up a toll-free line to take orders from customers across the country. Established firms did not like his approach and tried to stop his expansion, but Schwab was resilient. In 1975, Schwab opened his first branch in Sacramento, California. In 1977, Schwab started hosting seminars for clients. He also opened another office in Seattle, Washington. By 1978, he had grown the brokerage to 45,000 client accounts. He extended client service hours for quotes from the traditional 5.30 a.m. to 9 a.m. so as to accommodate more people. In 1979, the firm reached 84,000 client accounts. Because Schwab charged lower fees, he had to leverage technology to minimize expenses. In 1979, he rolled out a beta mainframe system for automated transaction and record keeping. 
The system was a success and formed the foundation for future innovations. In 1980, Schwab pioneered the brokerage industry's first 24-hour quotation service. That year, the firm's client base hit 147,000. Schwab gained membership into the New York Stock Exchange in 1981 and the firm opened a location in Manhattan, New York that year. In 1982, Schwab began offering 24-7 order entry services and then opened an international office in Hong Kong. By the end of 1983, client accounts reached $374,000. In 1983, Bank of America acquired Charles Schwab for $55 million. Schwab stayed as president of the semi-autonomous unit. He introduced the Schwab One brokerage account that year, followed by the mutual fund marketplace in 1984. The marketplace featured 140 funds. In 1985, Charles Schwab Inc. reached 1.2 million client accounts and $7.6 billion in assets. By 1986, the firm had topped 1.6 million customers and sales of $308 million. In March 1987, Schwab led his management team to buy back the firm from Bank of America. The bank sold the firm to them for $280 million. In September 1987, Schwab took the firm public. That same year, he launched the Financial Advisor Service to support independent investment advisors. The service reached $1 billion in client assets a year afterward. In 1989, Schwab rolled out the Telebroker Automated Telephone Brokerage Services, and in 1991, he introduced the Schwab 1000 Fund, a securities index fund that brought in $191 million in client assets that year. Schwab also hosted the company's first National Financial Advisors Conference in 1991. By 1994, the company's assets hit $122 billion. In 1995, as the dot-com era ran hot, Schwab launched Schwab.com to facilitate online trading. It also acquired ShareLink, a discount broker based in the United Kingdom. In 1996, he laid out the Schwab plan, which gave employed people access to over 1,300 mutual funds in one bundled 401k product. A year later, Charles Schwab Inc. was added to the S&P 500 index. Schwab also carried out a number of acquisitions in the 1990s. In 1998, Schwab expanded into Canada by acquiring two Canadian brokerages. In 2000, Charles Schwab merged with U.S. Trust. The company then acquired CyberCorp Inc. to strengthen its online offerings with better software and investor education tools. In the early 2000s, Schwab focused the company on providing exemplary services to customers. He bought out an investment research service, Schwab Equity Ratings, alongside two advisory services for wealthy clients, Schwab Advisor Network and Schwab Wealth Advisory. In 2003, he stepped down from the company he founded in 1971, leaving David Potruck as CEO. Potruck instituted fee hikes that did not go well with the company's clients. In 2004, the company announced two quarters of profit drops caused primarily by a 26% fall in revenue. In July 2004, the board of Charles Schwab let go of Potruck and reinstated Schwab as CEO. Schwab immediately went to work returning the company to its heritage as a discount brokerage. He removed the fee hikes and eliminated order handling and account service fees. He also refocused the company on supporting individual investors. In 2008, he semi-retired and stepped down as CEO. He remains chairman of the company's board of directors. Since 2008, Schwab has steered Charles Schwab Inc. through its acquisitions and innovations. He was board chair through the acquisitions of the 401k company and Options Express Holdings Inc. He also led the merger of Charles Schwab and TD Ameritrade in 2020. On innovations, Schwab has launched several products that simplify brokerage services support independent advisors, and educate clients on different markets. As of 2022, Schwab remains chairman of the board of directors of Charles Schwab Inc. The company has over 33 million clients and $7.8 trillion in assets. Schwab is one of the largest shareholders with a 7% ownership stake. He is ranked by Forbes as the 152nd richest person globally with a net worth of $11.1 billion. In 2008, U.S. President George Bush appointed Schwab chairman of the President's Advisory Council on Financial Literacy. 
The Council advised the U.S. President on ways to increase financial literacy in America. From 2014 to 2016, Schwab served on the board of directors of Yahoo Inc. Schwab has several best-selling books including How to Be Your Own Broker, It Pays to Talk, and Charles Schwab's Guide to Financial Independence. Schwab and his wife Helen founded the Charles and Helen Schwab Foundation to help children who have learning disabilities achieve their full potential. The foundation supports research into learning disabilities and funds programs aimed at making education easier for children with disabilities. In addition, the foundation provides assistance to entrepreneurial organizations on a mission to expand access to health care and prevent poverty. While serving as CEO and chairman of Charles Schwab, Schwab supported various programs dedicated to improving financial literacy among Americans, including teens. An example is Money Wise America. He also facilitated business assistance programs for minority business owners and college scholarship programs like the Charles Schwab Foundation Scholars in Financial Planning. Schwab has also held a 10-year tenure as a member of the Board of Trustees of the San Francisco Museum of Art. Charles Schwab came from an affluent family. He had dyslexia, and it was not easy for him to learn subjects like math and economics. He worked hard and started the newsletter which became successful slowly. His turtle pace approach proved to be very successful, and he founded the most remarkable brokerage in the world. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel to watch more videos like this.